Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I said, this is the day.
Christ still kept us. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. I just talked about a prayer by Deaconess Amanda Hill. Come on, give God praise as she comes. Yeah.
Now is where it's at. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God has been so good to us. Hallelujah. <coughs> May we all stand for the reading of the word if you are able and willing. Amen. From the epistle of Philippians, the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. And when you have it, say amen. If you don't say amen, just hold up. Oh, 
How many of you love the Lord this morning? Has God not done something wonderful for you and your family? Amen. You ought to give God a praise this morning. You know, He's right here with you. all of us in here. By the Spirit. Losing people we love in our lives. Whether it's a mother, father, sister, brother, friend, a family member, church member, all of us have experienced losing someone that was close to our heart and our minds. And we can't wrap our arms around them anymore. But God has been good to us anyway. A lot of us have experienced people within the hospital, people that have been sick, people that have been downtrodden, right? All of us, even ourselves, ourselves is an inclusive thing. All of us have done something or said something that might not have been pleasing in God's sight. But look at us now. We are here, live, move, have our being. We're able to inhale and exhale. One more time, you are to give God praise for all the goodness you've done in your life. Receiving this presence. I want to say to all those, we got many that are watching us by Facebook, those who are listening by teleconference, many that are here in this Holy Ghost sanctuary this morning. We give God praise for my son in the ministry, Minister Tahane. Come on, let's give God praise for him. Amen. Brother Thomas, my right hand, Tom, Brother Thomas, give God praise for Brother Thomas. All of my public partners that are watching. All those that are listening, again, all those that are sitting here, I want to say grace and peace unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. So happy to be here this morning to see, I can't say the smile on face, but I'm looking at your eyes. It is good to see your eyes and they act like you're smiling behind those masks. I see you, Sister Fuller. And we just thank God for you and your presence here. You could have been anywhere else this morning, but you decided to come. And we just give God praise for you coming and and being a part of our ministry, being a part of what we try to do, and coming back together post COVID 19. I know pre COVID 19, you know, we had people uh, in the church and things like that, but we have just as many that's watching, if not more. And you are here this morning, and we thank God for each and every one of you. I know sometimes it's a sacrifice to get up early in the morning, but I want to thank God for your sacrifice. And again, I say grace and peace unto you from God our Father. And our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're preparing for our in-person vacation Bible school uh, beginning in June, from June the 20th through the 22nd, Monday through Wednesday. We're going to have an in-person, our first in-person Bible, uh, vacation Bible school in June. And we're still staying with our safety protocol in face masks, and we're going to need a temperature check. I got uh, some people that's working, some wonderful people that's working with the youth ministry so they can have their vacation Bible school. So be prepared for that. We're going to give you the literature. We're going to pass out the outlines uh, prior to Bible study so you can be on point. Um, and so we're looking forward to having that as we start to revitalize and tool uh, our church ministry here at Mount Carroll. So with other things coming along, uh, but we're asking that you do that. And last but not least, before I preach, uh, we're going to now experience coming into our door close to the secretary's office, in my office, instead of that door right there because of the stairs, number one. And number two, because sometimes on the broadcast, you can hear the door open. While well, we're seeing and preaching. Amen. And we don't want any disturbance. And so we're going to do some experimenting here. We're going to experience coming in from that back door, uh, coming into the sanctuary. We're still doing our safety protocol here, right behind Thomas, the entrance behind Thomas. And so we can all come in together without the door going and without some of our seniors coming up those stairs. So uh, be prepared for that on next Sunday. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 12 through 14, for those who still have the Bible, wonderful writing from the Apostle Paul to the church of Philippi. Very powerful writing that he wrote to them while he was in prison. Amen. And we want to preach to you a little bit today to encourage some of you and to uplift some of you through the Word of God. For those who still have your Bibles out, I don't want to reread what uh, 
much the title uh, read, but I just want to bring up one verse here. Uh, verse number 14, chapter 3 of Philippians. Verse number 14, chapter 3 of Philippians. From the New International Version, it reads, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ. Is that the answer what your Bible reads? Yeah. We are together. And I want to use for a subject or a topic, and certainly with the help of the Holy Spirit, from this thought. Pressing toward the prize. Pressing toward the prize. I have two guests here this morning. I, I was warned at my house not to have them say today, but I do want them to say it. First of all, I have my cousin here, Mr. Roger Blue. John, would you say Come on, let's give God praise for my cousin. Amen. Then I have my brother from another mother. I um, mean, we've been together since the time we was in high school down in Charlotte and Miles Park College, and we just grew up together. We've been knowing each other since we were 18, 19 years old. Uh, we call him Bo, but his name is Roy Tolliver. Come on, let's give God praise for our friend Bo Tolliver. They came to stay a couple of days with me because I guess they missed me that much. And I just thank God for them coming and uh, coming to church on Sunday morning. Pressing toward the prize. We all have desires, all of us have desires to achieve significance in life. It does not matter whether you are Christian, non-Christian, spiritual, or secular. Inside of all of us, brothers and sisters, is a burning desire to succeed in whatever we set out to accomplish. Whether it's in our finances, in our relationships, or revitalizing our church post-COVID-19. Of course, I want to remind us that there are many stumbling blocks that will occur. But the result is that we should keep on pressing. The enduring message is through the storms of life and through the rains of life, we got to keep on pressing. Can you say amen? amen. Yes, it's like a boxer pressing in on his or her opponent. There is a fire burning in all of us that will not cease until we have achieved our intentional goal. See, intentional is the key word. Obtaining goals, our goals, is intentional. Becoming a healthier church is intentional. Paying off our loans and getting out of debt is intentional. Understanding our purpose-driven life in Christ is intentional. Nonetheless, some of us strive for a sense of perfection we feel would give significance and status in our secular living. Unfortunately, trying to accomplish the intended goal has caused some of us to become selfish. Some of us to become isolated from the needs of society's ills. There are many ills in our society. But Mr. Tyler reminded us of all of the things that we see on TV, on our a social media platform that caused vexations in our spirit because of the evilness that's happening or occurring in this world. And you don't have to look far. Now, nowadays, it happens in grocery stores. It happens in malls. It happens in street corners. Even in the church of God. Amen. Striving to obtain worldly status has caused many of us to become blind and unconcerned about what Jesus meant when he said that true significance in life comes when we are willing to serve one another. See, our salvation is not just about us. When God saved us, we say amen to that. But what do you do when God saves you? Or what do you do when people are in your atmosphere? Do they know they have been with a person who is a prayer? Do they know that been with a person who is a godly person? And it's not that we don't do anything wrong. All of us are caught in the uh, parasites of doing things that's wrong, but we thank God that he's forgiven God. Amen? 
We've all said something, we've all done something, we've all been to places, we've all had people around us, right? Sometimes people in life, you got to give them a see you anointing. You got to tell people sometimes, you know, God is pressing me toward this goal. God is moving me to obtain and to accomplish these things in my life, and you are holding me back. Amen? There's nothing wrong with a pursuit of excellence. There's nothing wrong with taking pride in accomplishing goals and desiring uh, a desire that will help make life a little bit better. There's nothing wrong with going after our dreams and pride that awaits us. There's nothing wrong with reaching to the light at the end of our personal tunnel. However, for life to have real meaning, we must focus our minds on a heavenly perspective. And that heavenly perspective is remembering that it is only God's purpose for us as individuals and as a church family that makes life worth living. Press to become more like the Lord is not easy. This journey of life as a Christian man and woman is not easy. There are moments we will feel like giving up. Anybody in here, if you're transparent with me, when you're walking with the Lord, sometimes you want to throw in the towel of life and you just want to give up and say, listen, it ain't worth it. Sometimes we doubt. I uh, started doubting if we made the right decision or not. Did I make the right decision? Is this the decision that's going to carry me through my life? And I know through life we have gears and battles, we have ebbs and flows, we have ups and downs. The song says, I've had good days, I've had bad days, I've had many years to climb. Has anybody ever been like that in this church? You felt like you just wasn't making progress in your life, and you felt like, hey, I'm not going to do it. But God never said our journey would be easy. But I believe that God will lighten the load if our footsteps are ordered in his word. And as we continue to press toward our post-COVID-19 goals, I want to tell you today and encourage somebody that no matter what you go through and no matter what your struggles are, God will. Can I get a witness? See us through. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise for Listen, this spiritual journey looms in our text this morning. I see Paul writes from prison and he's defending himself against the false teachers to encourage his readers like you and me to stay focused on the glory in Christ Jesus. That's what he says. He says, not that I have already obtained all of this. He says, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take a hold for that which Jesus Christ took hold of me. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straight toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. In other words, the Philippian Christians in Paul's day, some like us today, suffered from an illusion that they had already uh, achieved perfection, that they were already good enough but Paul outright rejects this attitude because I want to tell you today, no matter who you are, no matter who you know, or who knows you, there's nobody in this church or watching me on Facebook that's perfect. Amen. 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 The Apostle Paul saw that limited life of legalism according to the law was not the answer to his salvation. The Apostle Paul must have remembered the words of the Lord Jesus, for what is it for a man to profit if he should gain the whole world and lose his life? So it doesn't matter how much money I have in my pocket. It doesn't matter what type of car I drive. It doesn't matter what type of house my wife and I live in. We can't take none of that stuff with us. Can I get a witness here? It doesn't matter if it's good if you have it. You ought to thank God for it. If you have a good 401k, you ought to praise the Lord for it. If you have a good retirement account, you ought to give God praise for it. But I'm going to tell you today, the fact of the matter is, what are you going to do when you're a sick What are you going to do when the doctor doesn't give you? What are you going to do when you know your time down here? I know you said, Pastor, that sounds kind of morbid. But listen, I don't want to give you a one side of life without giving you the other side of life because there is a polarity of life. And the polarity of life is when we're living one of these days, we're going to have to leave this one. Amen? But listen, Paul tells them that he certainly could if anyone should have reason to boast from a legalistic standpoint. He has boasted of his lineage and his pedigree. He was blameless in the law, he said. He had every honor and he had every privilege. But he had a spiritual awakening when he was apprehended 
by the law. All of the things that he had learned in his past, all of the legalistic knowledge he had acquired in his past amounted to nothing. See, listen, brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how smart we think we are. I've been to school, I got my master, I got my doctors, I got my bachelor's. So what? I thank God for it, but he can't get me to heaven's gate. It's only those who are born again. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Only being arrested by Christ makes the difference in our lives. Then Paul says here, as I hasten to let you go, he says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his suffering. Becoming like him in his death. And so somehow tied into the resurrection from the dead. Paul was not talking about the resurrection from physical death, but the resuscitation to the likeness of Christ. He said, in other words, the old man's son is dead. And the new person, Paul, becomes alive. Listen, in Christ, brothers and sisters, we are a new Christian. Amen? Listen, when you look in the real view mirror of life, and we all have those real view mirrors in our cars, amen? When you look in the real view mirrors of life, what do you do you see the person that you are now? You see, the experiences and the knowledge that we obtain in our past like, help us to make the man and woman we are today, amen? For those who are listening, you have to thank God that I'm here today based on what I learned in my past. You know, my past taught me a lot of lessons. My, 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 my partners that we're talking about there this week, our past taught us a lot about who we are today. And there's no doubt in my mind that God is still working on all of us. God is still molding us. God is still shaping us. God is still creating within us something brand new. And if you continue to look back on those past relations, yeah. if you continue to look back on those past things that brought us back, listen, you will never prepare for what God is doing in the now and what God will do in our future. In other words, Paul would say, he says, God is still working on me. He's molding me. He's shaping me. Paul's suffering turns into his glory. And I just told a uh, young lady that this morning, I was suffering. This is not what you think it is. Because there's glory in the struggle. There's glory in the journey of life. And in conforming to the life of the Christ, we must continue to press on to take hold of what occurred, Paul said, on his Damascus road. And I want to tell you today as I hasten to let you go, all of us in here, all of us that are watching me by Facebook, all of those that are listening by teleconference, all of us in here have had a Damascus road experience. Listen, brothers and sisters, y'all not saying that to me. Listen, all of us was headed to here. Y'all ain't praying with me. All of us was headed down the road of destruction, amen? All of us thought we were doing the right thing. All of us thought we were saying the right thing. But we were headed straight. Can I go a witness here? To hell, right? People say, well, let's not talk about hell. You know, we don't want to talk about that now because we're living in this postmodern era. We don't want to talk about hell. But listen, I believe it's real. And if it's real within the Bible, why can't we talk about it? If we talk about heaven, we must talk about hell. But you want to thank God today that we all had a Damascus Road experience where we had a theophany. A theophany is meeting the presence of God. And when we met the presence of God, can I get a witness? Our lives were never the same again. Y'all are saying that. Yeah, listen, it's not about a life of perfection. I'm trying to tell you, it's not about being perfect. So there's nothing that you would ever do, brothers and sisters, that would be perfect. Can I get a witness? Because it's not by the works we do. I don't care how many works we do. Listen, you say, well, Pastor, I've been in the community. I've been uh, feeding the hungry. And that you should do. I've been clothing the naked. And that you should do. Can I get a witness? But the question is, have you been born again? Have you had that Damascus role in his face? He says here, he must press on to fulfill his purpose for which the Lord has saved him. Christ had apprehended him. Apprehended simply means he took hold of him. A Paul so he could be in light to us. He knew he had not fully arrived yet, but because he had received an abundance of spiritual knowledge, he says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. He knew for Christ he had many more tears to shed. He knew for Christ he had many more toys and pain. It's like a runner running in a race. Can I get a witness? He must press on. You see, I told Bo I would talk about it this morning, but my friend Bo, he ran track. Is that right? And you had to keep pressing on, brother. All of us in here, we had to keep pressing on. Can I get a witness? I know we get tired. I know we feel like getting up, but you got to press on because there's a prize yeah. Yeah. 
on the other side. He could not be content with the glories of his past. There's still more work to be done. He could not rest on his laurels. Past achievements were not enough. He was focusing focus on the momentum of the present and not the mistakes of his past. He said, forget those things which are behind me. Listen, brothers and sisters, all of us have had pitfalls and failures. You know, failures. You know, Pastor, I was trying to get this done. I was trying to get that done. And it seemed like it could never, what is it, make the ends meet. My ends are all over the place. I could never seem to make the ends meet. And my finances, I tried to make the ends meet. But it would seem like I was spending more than I was making. In that relationship. Right thing. I tried to do the right thing. I tried to give the right thing, but it seemed like my giving and my and, and everything I put my heart and trust into, it seemed like it just fell by the wayside. Fell out of faith. And I can't say all that God has waiting for us in our future, brothers and sisters. But I know that the Lord did not bring us this far to leave us now. During the height of the pandemic. We as a church and community family have some trying times and unforgettable moments. During the pandemic, all of us in here have lost someone that we love. During the pandemic, all of us have had to call somebody because you couldn't go visit the hospital that was sick with COVID-19. All of us in here have experienced somebody. This is brothers and sisters that just felt like giving up and that they were going to make it unforgettable moments, even within myself. Unforgettable moments. Can't turn on the news without hearing something. Devastation happening in the world. Can't look on the social media without somebody put some, some bad stuff on there. There's unforgettable moments, but God has a purpose for all of us. Yeah. And as we move forward, we have to keep on striving. Let go and let God have his way. See, God's way is stretching out our hands and releasing our minds to his will. So when you come into the worship service, all of us that are watching me, I know you're not here, you're here by spirit, all of us that are here, whenever you come into the house of God, you've got to recapitulate what God has done for you. You've got to say, your mind, I cannot come to the house of God like I go to any other place in society because the house of God is sacred to me. It's where I get my spirit Every now and then we got to eat the protein and carbohydrates of the word of God that strengthens us, that helps us press on and strive on. Whenever you come into God's house, you want to give God praise. When the choir is singing, you want to sing like you're happy. You want to sing like you're free. You want to let people know the reason I'm singing is because God has been good to me. And when somebody is praying, you want to pray like you're praying out of your mind. You want to talk to God. And you don't have to use those big exegetical words. You just tell God what you're going through. Can I get a witness, brothers and sisters? I can't see your faces now. I can see your eyes. But you know within yourself how good God has been to you. Now, you might not tell everybody, but every now and then you want to wave your hand and say, God, I want to thank you. Pressing toward the mark. Headed toward the finish line of life until God says it's over. Yes. Because one of these oh days, whether you know it or not, God is going to say it's over. Can I get a witness? Out of all that we do, out of all that we say, we got to keep on prayers to be more like Christ Jesus. They tell me whenever you press a coal in the coal mine long enough, if you press it long enough, eventually it changes into a diamond. They tell me whenever sand irritates an oyster long enough, it produces a beautiful pearl. And if we keep on pressing toward the more of our upward calling, God keeps developing us and prepared us huh, for the ultimate prize of eternal life. Huh? As a matter of fact, when you look in the mirror early on Monday morning, huh, when you look in the mirror early on a Tuesday morning, huh, don't quite look the same. Huh? I can remember a time when I had a head full of hair, huh? but now I don't have hair like I 
I used to. Huh? That means I'm getting a little older now. Huh? I didn't have all this great in my beard. Huh? That means I'm getting a little older now. Huh? Something's beginning to happen to my physical body. Huh? Every now and then when we get up early in the morning, huh? sometimes we have aches and pains in our body. That only lets us know huh? that our time is not that long. Huh? But I'm so glad this morning huh? that we can stretch for a prize. Huh?
Somebody has lost someone close to you. Know someone that's sick. Know someone that's just going through. You're not going to be sick in the hospital, just going through. It's out of the spirit of tug of war, tug of war to do what's right or to do what's wrong. And the thing I love about God, He never takes away our power of choice. You have to choose. You cannot forego choice, brothers and sisters. Every single day, you must choose. You must choose what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, where you're going to go. You cannot forego choice. As somebody today, you may need to choose Christ in your life. We're going to offer our ministry broadcast in our church to you. You can type it in on Facebook. You can call our office on Wednesday to Friday and talk to us and let us know where you, where you are or who you are. Say you want to be saved. You want to give up that past life and come toward Jesus. You want to press toward what we're talking about this morning. And we have some names that are sent. They're sent to me in the office. Some names here at our church that stands in need of prayer. We're praying for Sister Dorothy Lewis, Sister Lisa Lewis, Sister Danny Williams, Sister Mary Cross, Brother Tommy Cox, Brother Fred Shannon. Brother Alma Clay, Mother Alma Williams, Sister Danielle Azale, Sister Pauline Kelly. Who wrote in to me? I know there are others, I might not have the names, but there are others I know that are here and watching and standing in need of prayer. And I'm going to pray for you, but as I always do, I don't know what your personal needs are. I don't need to know what they are. Only you and God know. And if you want to stand for somebody, or intercede for your wife, for your friend, your husband, or you want to intercede for some, your children, your grandchildren, why don't you stand on your feet? And let's have a little intercession prayer right now. Those who are watching me if you're in your living room or in your den outside, or wherever you may be, just stop for a moment in your kitchen. Just stop for a moment. And let's have a personal prayer. And in your personal prayer, first of all, you give God thanks to Say, Lord, if you don't want me to do anything else, I already thank you for what you want me to do. Pray for your mothers, pray for your fathers, and your sisters, and your brothers, and your friends. Every eye closed. Those who are watching in this, every head bow. Come and talk to us again, so Lord, we're going to give you a second. Come on, take it to the Lord in prayer. Eyes closed, head bow. And when you talk to God, you just talk to Him. And it's not that He doesn't know. You just acknowledge your God already. See, God, I pray for my wife. I pray for my mother, my father. Tell God you want to pray for your sisters and your brother. Oh, I got some children out there that's moving out. They're staying on their own now. God, I want you to cover them in the name of Jesus. Father, I have my grandchildren that are in school, that are about to come out of school. And Father, I want you to stay with my children. Protect them from the shootings in the schools. Protect them from a couple of my grandchildren. Father, I have people on my job that are hurting on my job or my work. And Father, I want you to set an anointing in their life. Father, I pray for my co-workers. I pray for those in the community, the little boys and the little girls, and those who don't have food to eat. I pray for the ones that don't have clothes to wear. Talk to God about our government. God, I pray for our government officials, local, regional, and national, that they can make the right decisions for our city and our country Amen. because we stand in the need of prayer. Oh, Father, we just give you praise today and we thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer and inclining thy ear to us. All of the names that we'll call, all ten names that we'll call, God, I ask you for peace in the midst of the sermon. Father, the names that were not called, the ones that's interceded right now as they stand on their feet, God. Whatever their desire or request, of you, God, I want you to bless them right now in Jesus' name. So many are crying out to you right now, Lord. They're crying out to you today like they've never done before. Oh, God, my heart is hurt. Father, my spirit is broken. And Father, my mind is confused. Father, I've made some failures in my life. Oh God, would you take my broken heart and put it back together again? Would you take my mind and regulate it to your will and to your way? Father, I just thank you today. Father, I just give you praise. Thank you for Mount Calvary, all of our members, men, women, boys, and girls. 
Thank you for all the covenant partners that shine in your mouth, Calvary, every, every Sunday morning. Father, we thank them. God bless them and keep them in your care. All my friends and family that have come to join us today, God, give them travel and mercies, God. We want to thank you, God, as they head back to their destination. God, be with them and guide them. We just thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Because God has heard your prayer, why don't you put your hands together completely? Tithes and offerings and receive my blessings.
because I'm a living witness that you hold on to God's unchanging hand. How many know that God will? God will. Amen. Yeah.